Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be reviewing the newest item to drop on Charlotte Tilbury's website, which are the matte eyes to mesmerize. So if you want to see my thoughts on these, then just keep watching. So I did order these off of the Charlotte Tilbury website. I will have them linked down below for you guys. At the current moment, these are only available on the Charlotte Tilbury website. I was quite excited because if you aren't familiar with the Charlotte Tilbury line, she has a product called the Eyes to Mesmerize, which is very popular. And basically they're just a cream shimmer eyeshadow in a pot. I like these, I don't love these. I don't reach for them too often, but they are quite easy to throw on. I don't find them to be the most long wearing on me. Sometimes I feel like they crease, but I like them enough because I was really curious about these matte ones. So you'll notice I don't have any makeup on. I want to experiment with some ways of applying and layering these, but I'm really excited. <laughs> Anyways, the details on these, they are $34 each. There are currently five shades on the website. All of them are neutral shades, no crazy colors. I picked up the three darkest shades, Diffuse Black, Smoky Taupe, and Chocolate Veil, just because I thought that these three would be the ones that I would wear most. The two other shades are lighter. I just didn't see myself getting too much wear out of those. When I use a matte cream base, typically I want it a little bit deeper. I love to layer and that's exactly what I thought I would be doing with these. It's supposed to be super easy, you guys. You're supposed to just swipe it on, smoke it out with a brush, and then line your eyes and you're good to go to get a really quick and easy smoky eye. Some other claims is that they're smooth, emollient, soft glow glide, smudge proof, and waterproof last 12 hours. All right, let's take a look. Now, you guys have already warned me that there have not been very positive reviews on these. I feel like I work with products like these a lot, so we'll see. I don't have any makeup on right now, like I said, so that we can experiment and I can take it off. And let's say I'm in my normal method of application. I normally have something on my eyelid, like concealer or an eye base, putting on a little bit of Vizier eye primer, just to be fair, so that it's not completely bare. This is the box that they all are gonna come in. If you need to take a look at the ingredients, here they are. This is for the Smoky Taupe. They have a six month shelf life, according to the bottom, and five grams of product. By the way, you guys, when I placed an order off of Charlotte Tilbury, they were having a deal, and I got a very nice size. I think this is normally like $30, like a travel size of Charlotte's Magic Cream. Ugh, the incentive of shopping from the brand's website, I feel like it's sometimes better when they give you freebies because I love Magic Cream. I don't love buying magic cream because it's expensive so I'll take every free morsel that I can get so the bottom of the component says it's made in Italy it is the exact same packaging as the shimmery eyes to mesmerize and again here is smoky taupe you can see that I don't know, it looks really almost gel-like. Oh, it's hard. I thought it, my finger was just gonna press right in. It's not budging. I don't know if you can see it's not pushing in at all. Oh, Ooh. Okay, um, so I'm, hmm. <laughs> I'm pressing kind of hard, warming it up with my fingers. See, no indentations here. It's just that the shimmery eyes to mesmerize are really, really soft. These are definitely harder. So that's smoky taupe. It's not as opaque as I thought it should be. I really am trying not to come in biased, but you guys have warned me about this. <laughs> so here we have Chocolate Veil. I feel like this one is a little bit softer, but it still is just, it's just hard. I'm pressing in and there's no indentation happening. And here's Chocolate Veil. For being a cream, this is... Now it does say diffused online, so maybe that's what they're talking about, but for most cream shadows, they swatch pretty opaque, these don't, but we'll see. And then honestly, if I had to get one of these, it was gonna be diffused black because I love using a black base underneath. Wonder if you can use this as eyeliner. Okay, oh, the black swatched a little bit more like I would expect the other two to swatch. The black also felt the softest of the three. Not soft, but it felt the softest. We'll see. We'll see. I just want to show you though. I'm pulling out Marie Antoinette. You can even see in the pan how soft and like squishy they are. So complete different texture here. In case you were wondering, here's how 
Marie Antoinette looks next to Smoky Taupe. We'll have to layer those two because those would be pretty in a look, I think. All right, uh, here we go. <laughs> Let's get started. So I'm gonna start off with some of Smoky Taupe and I'm gonna use my finger to apply. Now I know an issue with these is that if you have long nails or fake nails, you have trouble getting into the pots. I'll apply these with a brush to see, but these dry really fast. Like I, you're gonna need a finger to get product out <laughs> because it's dry. That looks okay, right? Now I'm gonna try with, I'm looking for a brush that would be good. Let's use the Kaleidos S2. I wanna use a synthetic brush and I'm gonna circle it in here, get it on the brush. Okay. Oh, that, okay. Let's see. I think I might have swirled too hard. I was overcompensating for the texture. I don't mind it. I think it looks fine. It looks like a wee bit patchy, but I want to clean my brush off, but I'm having problems getting it off the brush. I feel like once you get the product on the brush, it becomes goopy, but that might be my fault. Hold on. I'm using a BK Beauty 202 brush to soften it. I bet you these are definitely long wearing. <laughs> That's for certain. This brush might have a little bit of green on it, but this is a good synthetic brush. It's from Luxie. And I like it because it's a little bit more dense. This thing has dried. It's not going anywhere. I don't know if you can see it's a little bit patchy on the eyelid, but it's nothing that's that bad. I'm going to take the same brush and a little bit of chocolate veil to see if we can layer it. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on. That made like no difference, but don't go in hard with the brush like I did because it completely makes the brush unusable. It like gunks up the brush, which is not good. Um, hmm. Let's see if we can layer it with a shimmery eye cement summarize. I'm using Marie Antoinette right on top so that this way you get that long wear cream eyeshadow look. This looks good. I like mixing the shimmer with the matte. I bet you it's gonna be something really waterproof and long wearing. Okay, let's try something else on the other eye. I wanna see how this applies with a brush. So I'm gonna use this brush right here. This is a W21 from Esum. And let's put some of Chocolate Veil all over the lid. I don't know if I should get a lot of product or a little. So that was not enough. Let me... Honestly, you guys, I just don't like applying this with a brush. It's too stiff of a product. You can see me literally having to pull on my eyelid to spread the product out. So what I would suggest if you have nails, get a tool that you can just take a little bit of the product out on, put it on the back of your hand and kind of warm it up with your finger. And if you can't get the application on the eye, at least warm it up first and then go in with your brush. It's going to have to be warmed up because this is just too difficult to do. For me, it's not that big of a deal y'all know I don't even take care of my nails it's definitely applying much more even and easy with my finger and I'm gonna try with this brush again just get a little bit and blend it not too much though I almost want the bristles to just do the work but since this color is darker we're testing the blendability that doesn't look good does it <laughs> I feel like wearing these alone might be a little bit difficult. You can totally get this to look nice and blended if you mix in powders. Like I, you can see this is not moving. <laughs> you, uh, you'd have to go in with the powder over top of this. Um, Why would she make these so stiff? That is so odd. I've never come across a matte product that is this hard to work with. Okay, going to take an eyeliner brush and let's go into Diffuse Black. I just wanna see how this works as an eyeliner. Wow, that's not giving a smooth glide at all. <laughs> Oh no. I mean, okay. I wouldn't straight up use it for like a precise eyeliner like I just did, but you could use this. I was gonna say for a smoky liner, but you really shouldn't because you, are, you won't be able to blend it out, but you can incorporate this into a look. I'm really trying, you guys. Let me take this off. I wanna try the black all over the lid now. These are hard to get off. I don't wanna tug at my eyes too much. You can see. I'm struggling to get it off. So this is what I was most excited to try this with is using the black as a base underneath shadows. So getting the eye primer on. Okay, I'm gonna put diffuse black all over the eyelid. This is hard to do. It's quite intimidating, but you don't need it to look nice. 
Should I try and make this look nice? I'll try. So the best way is definitely with fingers. Ugh, it's looking dry out here. What the heck? Okay, and then I'm gonna try and blend out the edges. <sighs> this is black, so if I can hardly to get the brown to blend out, I don't think I can get the black to blend out. <laughs> it's really irritating my eyes how much rubbing I'm having to do with this product. Oh no, we're just gonna have to leave it at that. This product is really rough on my eyes. It's irritating my eyes. You can see it's dried down too fast. I don't even know if it even has like a wet period. It just, it's so dry. Okay, that's okay. Is it? <laughs> I just wanted to test it like this though. Just to give a suggestion, if you did pick this up, put your glittery shades on top. This is going to completely transform the look. I'm going to use this shade right here from my Utopian Dream. And look at that. You can't tell me that that's not gorgeous. This is probably the scenario where I'm going to most likely use this. I really don't care about blending it out. It doesn't need to be blended out. I will use a crease shade to blend it out and it will look fine. But I just want to get that black base down to work as a background for the shadow. Uh, so this is giving me a pretty tough time. I am going to do my eyebrows because we're going to get serious about actually creating a wearable look now that I've gotten familiar with the formula. I'll be right back. Hold on. Uh, uh, the more I was thinking about this product, the less I liked it. <laughs> I uh, just put on a little bit of the NARS Soft Matte Concealer on my eyelid. And I want to do this first on my eyes just in case. I like breezed through all these brushes and got them all gunky. Okay, let's do this. I don't know. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to mix all three, I think. And I'm going to use Smoky Taupe on the inner half of my lid. Let's do that way. And I'm going to work it up into the inner part of my crease. And I just want to use my finger to work it up nice and slow. So this one is the closest to my skin tone. So I think this is going to be the easiest to just put all over for just a shade of depth on the eyelid. Like you can see, I don't even really need to blend that. I'm gonna do the full wear test and everything today, guys. So I actually think if you're gonna use these, you probably just wanna get the lighter shades. They're gonna be easier to work with if you want that really quickly one and done kind of matte eye. Okay, I do want to blend that a little bit. So I'm gonna just see if this BK Beauty brush, which is way too soft and not dense enough, can work it out just a little bit. So the smoky taupe is acceptable to me. I can make that one work. So now I'm gonna use a chocolate veil on the outer half of my lid, working slowly but surely. Okay, the less product you apply, the easier it is to blend out, is what I'm noticing. So I almost think less is more with this product. Okay, let's do it on the other side. So the best way I find for me to apply it is to concentrate the color on the lid, and then whatever is left with your finger, press it on the outer parts of the eye and then go in with your brush, and that is going to give the best results. Ugh, there's so much drag on my eyelid while using this. I don't understand. Okay, I mean, this is all I'm gonna do, guys. <laughs> Today is going to be a super simple look. I'm gonna take a little bit of the black on my eyeliner brush, and I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not even really using it too much as a liner. I'm just going to extend my lash line. So I'm just going like this, like a baby wing. Which, it works fine for this. It's not super black, which I actually like in this situation. And I'm kind of blending it out. And I'm going to take my wipe and clean that up. <sighs> I was like holding my breath, hoping we get a decent look. Oh, okay guys, I think this is all I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to finish the rest of my face makeup and then we'll do the lower lash line. Okay, let's move back down to the lower lash line. I'm simultaneously testing the light reflecting foundation from NARS. And I can tell you guys, this is going a lot better than this eye review we have going on. So I'm going to use Chocolate Veil and I'm going to use this Morphe pencil brush. And I'm just going to trace this along the lower lash line. And this is a lot easier to apply than that whole eyelid situation. Oh my goodness. Since it's such a smaller area, I have so much more control. Okay, so going much better on the lower lash line here. Okay, yeah, this actually looks really nice. Uh, very happy about that. I'm going to take a little bit more and let's see if we can put it in the waterline. All my brushes are getting so gunky from this. I'm going to have to wash them. 
see, it might just be the applicator that I'm using because I'm going very, very soft. But you can see there is a little bit of that that got in my waterline. Um, it's really, really subtle. I just wanted to test it out. Like, see how much better it looks when you kind of blend that into the waterline. If you use a more stiff brush, you can probably get a little bit more pigmentation. I just want to press some of that. Okay, that definitely worked out a lot better than up here. <laughs> All right, let me finish the rest of my makeup and I will kind of give you some thoughts before the wear test. <laughs> Ugh. All right, you guys. So unfortunately, I can tell you right now, I am going to do a wear test. We are going to see if the eyeshadow lasts. I didn't put on any powder on top. So we'll see how it goes. I put on some individual lashes to kind of amp up the look. I think the look is really pretty. I love how soft and a matte look is totally underrated. I did like how it performed on my lower lash line. And you can see that brown haze in my waterline still. But you guys, I'm telling you, I think I would just rather use matte powder eyeshadows to create this look. In terms of me being able to see use with it, my favorite shade that I picked up is the Diffuse Black because I do like to use these types of products for bases, but I still would just recommend you find a different black base. This is not the one, personally. I'd rather just use like a black eyeliner and put it all over. These just tugged on my eyelid too much. My eyes were getting sensitive to the amount of tugging that was happening. They look kind of patchy. You can see a little bit of patchiness on this eye. Uh, they were just really hard for me to apply. I have a lot of film to get through when it comes to editing this because these three little pots, it took me forever to do the demos because I was taking so long blending them and trying to make everything even. It made my brushes all gunky, so now I have to wash them. It's just not worth the effort. No matter how these wear, I really am not recommending these. The only times I can think that I would really truly use these is weddings, like wedding makeup that you need to last all day. If these last all day, I'm gonna assume that they will by how dry they are. We'll see about that. Uh, yeah, I don't like these. They're just, they're too hard to work with. Um, I'd stick with the shimmers and I'd just pair them with powder eyeshadows and call it a day, but I'm gonna check in in a few hours with you guys. I wanted to do a super quick check-in with the eyes I mean just as I had expected this eye product really does last a long time I'll give Charlotte that it's just getting it on there is a pain in the butt but it looks really great on my lower lash line it looks great on my eyelid maybe a little bit of color faded on my eyelid but it's nothing serious I don't notice any creasing I mean I know it looks patchy but that's how it looked when it was applied wear time it's looking really good so I don't know like I don't like these, but if I hadn't put my grubby fingers in here, this might be really good for weddings in the summer, you know? Because these are pretty budge proof. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys in a few hours. All right, I just wanted to check in really quick for an eight hour wear test. And I mean, as I suspected, the wear time on this is really nice. I would say maybe a little bit of the color faded. It's not quite as bold, but there is no additional creasing happening. I think it wears very, very, very nice. Even if it did fade down, it faded down pretty. It's much better than swimming into your creases and any of that. So as I suspected, the wear time is good. Unfortunately though, these did not work out for me. I just don't think that they are worth the hassle. If you want a good matte cream shadow, I would look in the direction of a MAC paint pot, okay? You can't go wrong with those. Danessa Myricks also has some great options. Anything else but these. These are just way too hard on the eye, way too much tugging. It dries way too fast. <sighs> You have to really be in some scenarios where you need bulletproof makeup in which that in that case I suppose these are good but what's the point if you can't even get them to apply anyways <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful thank you so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one